my name is Sophie and welcome to my new video. Since the year is coming to a close, I just thought that it would be sensible to do a bookshelf tour. I love watching bookshelf tours. I think they are so nice to watch even though you see the same like five books over and over again. I, I just love watching them. I love when people do long story times or long unboxings or long bookshelf tours as long as I can see they're passionate about whatever they're talking about and they're going like really into detail. I just love listening to that. I still have that go on in the background while you're like cleaning your room or something. I just, I really enjoy it. And that's also why I enjoy long book rants. And I do that myself because I like watching them. So I do it myself, makes sense, right? When I was younger, I thought it was really important to have a big bookshelf. I used to look at Sarah, no, what's her name? Sasha, <laughs> Sasha, or Sasha? Sasha Allsberg or Sasha. What? Oh my god, I haven't watched her in a long time. Is she still around? I used to be obsessed with her when I was 14 and she had this huge bookshelf, like huge bookshelf and I wanted that. I wanted that for me. Eventually I just got rid of all of the books that I didn't care about, which was most of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so picky. So as I said, this is going to be a very long, very in-depth video and I'm going to put a little something out when I speak about spoilers, but I'll try to avoid it. Also, I warned everyone, my bookshelf isn't that big anymore, and the books, there's not going to be any secret, like any hidden gems in there. It's just going to be what everyone else is talking about, so it's a disclaimer, okay? <laughs> so um, I have to stand on my chair and there's no way for me to prop the camera up, so I will just have to hold it, kind of like a vlog style. Does it look cute? I have a bunch of um, <laughs> popcorn bags um, on the wall here. This is for all of the Star Wars movies. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I have that. So my first bookshelf is the one up here, right? Okay, so what do we have in the front? We have this calendar. This is a calendar. I never use it. I think it's cute. I got it from a thrift store once and it's so dusty up here. I'm exposing myself for never cleaning. We have a little Minnie Mouse from Disneyland Paris. I went there as a child and she's still with me and she watches over me because she was she looks like directly at my bed. So she makes sure I don't die in my sleep or anything like that. Laying down, we have Shadow and Bone by Lee Wardugo and I read this. And if you ask me for one thing that happens in this book, I will not be able to tell you anything because I don't remember anything. I've kept it because the show is coming out and I've been I've been telling myself I'm gonna read the whole Christian trilogy before it comes out, but I'm just, I'm not going to. It sucks ass. I'm not going to read it. I'm still keeping it around. This is the only book I have. I don't have the other three because I'm not as crazy as other people and buy all of the series if I don't even know I'm gonna like it or not. So props to me for doing that. Uh, there's this picture of Reese King. I didn't draw it. My friend who I'm not friends with anymore drew it, and I got it from her. So. He's also just chilling here on the wall. It's really pretty though, I can draw like this. We have Victor Hugo, because I'm French. Hunchback of Notre Dame, I've never read it. I want to though, that's why I have it up here. Um, I got it from the thrift store, yay! Forgone is another book that I got from the thrift store. I don't really want to talk in depth about it because I feel like everyone's read it. Who hasn't read Aragon? Honestly, with Aragon, I read that when I was 12. And then I read it again when I was 13 and I don't really know why and I always forgot that there was more to the series like there's not just one book there's a whole bunch of books and there's a movie but the movie sucks ass. So when I read this when I was 12 I started to become obsessed with the name Sephira and I still am obsessed with that name like I would never call my daughter that or anything but that name just has stuck with me and every fictional character that I've ever written at least when I was 12 her name was always Sephira because I love that name so much. I have a Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I want to talk about this because I've tried reading it twice now and I can't get into it. Bookmark is still in here. I read 165 pages and I, I fucking hate it. I hate it! I picked it up years ago. Maybe when I was 15. Five years ago. Tried reading it because everyone said it was an amazing book. And I like the idea of the world, but I just... It's just not picking up at all. It's not picking up. And everyone on book Twitter and everywhere says, Oh my god, this is such a good book. You have to read it. And to that I say, no, I can't. I can't possibly read this, honestly. I that the magic system might be a little bit complex, but you can take 165 pages until the action starts. That's just a no-go. Next we have Skyth. I don't even know. Neil Schusterman. What's up? 
I got this book recently, not too recently, when stalls were still open and they're not anymore, so a few months ago. Oh, it's been something that I wanted to read because of dystopian, and I was like, maybe I only read fantasy, maybe get back into dystopian a little, but no, I haven't read it yet. Not, I haven't tried it yet, so I can't talk shit about it, but I haven't read it yet. The dude's name is Rowan, so that's a no-go for me. Fuck Rowan, I hate Rowan. The premise sounds interesting, that's why I picked it up, and it's supposed to be really good. It has a lot of good reviews, and if I ever get back into reading, which I'm not into reading at the moment, <laughs> I will read it. I'm just at uni now, I ha I'm busy, I don't have time, and if I have time, I don't read because um, nothing that excites me has come out. Maybe A Storm Against the- what the fuck is the name of the book? The last book of the Reaper- no, what, Torch Against the Knights Quartet, that one has come out, so. I might read that soon, but nothing else has excited me, so. Sorry. I have this one. It's Never Night. I have a video where I reviewed, or I, it's like a TBR. No, not a TBR. It's like what I've read during quarantine, and Never Night is part of that. I like the concept. I like the love interest. Um, I thought it was cool. The sex scenes were a little cringe. In that video, I said I wanted to read the next book, and I do, but... I'm just not into reading right now. I'm in a reading slump. Okay, I'm in a reading slump, and so um, I don't think that I don't know what the second God's Grave is. That what the name is of the second book? I feel like God's Grave is just not a good book to take me out of my reading slump. You know what I mean? It's very gory, um, but it was a nice, it was a nice idea of a book. It reminded me of Hogwarts, and I like Hogwarts, so I've been in my Harry Potter phase lately. True Witch by Susan Dennard was not it for me. It's in the same video as the one about Nevernight. Um, and in that one, I don't remember what I said, but I just didn't like it. It's not like it sucked ass. It was just really predictable and it was really basic. And I didn't get into the characters. It was really basic. It was really basic. That's a good word. It's nothing... It's, it's kind of original. I like the idea of the witches, but it wasn't original enough. Like, the rest of it was basic. The magic system I liked. But the characters were very generic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Up next, am I gonna pull them all out? No, this is the clockwork. No, what what are they called? Dark artifices. No, infernal devices. <laughs> There's just too much. Like I can't fucking deal with all of these books she's written. They're by Cassandra Clare. I have a review on the first and on the third book. Um, yeah, you know what? I hated it. I cried when I read the last book. I'm not gonna deny that. I did. I got it on tape, it's in the video where I cried my eyes out, but honestly, that was just because I cry really easily. <laughs> it was just written for a different time, is how I like to see it. If I had written that series when I was 12, or when it came out, 2012, so I was 12, <laughs> I would have probably really, really enjoyed it and really enjoyed the characters, um, but reading it now in 2020, it was just not it. It's not it. Tessa is fucking annoying. I heard she gets better in the uh, rest of the series, but in that book, in that series, in her trilogy, she sucks ass. She's a she's a dumb ass protagonist. I stand with Jem, and I've stood with Jem from the first book, and I made it very known that I did not think that Will was a good character either. I did cry for him though, so yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have the Red Rising trilogy, and I have three different copies of this, like three different, three different editions. First one is in the German paperback, and I don't know why it is like 900 pages, honestly, I have no idea. The second one is in the English paperback, it's really, it's it's kind of really small, I'm sorry. The last one is in uh, English hardcover, and this is so pretty, I love this. I remember getting this and I was so excited, and I still am excited whenever I get it out. I have recommended the series to everyone who asked me, so no one. Did I say I was by Pierce Brown? I don't know, but honestly, this is sci-fi, and this is gory, and this is more... I don't know if I would call it new adult, but it's it's a little more serious, a little bit more graphic than what I was used to when I read it. And I also read this when I was 14. I read most of the books I read when I was 14. This series is amazing. This trilogy, the first trilogy is amazing. My favorite characters were Cassius, I love him, and Severo. And the, the personalities in this book are just so, like, they're just so different. The critique that I had with Truth Witch was that a lot of it felt very generic and not really different for anything else and I think for Red Rising that you can't just say that it's very it's a little bit more complex it's a way bigger series with way more world building it's it's in space and honestly I don't even know half of who belongs to who and who is families with who honestly it's too complicated you know that's why I also don't want to read Game of Thrones because I would or an Ice of no and Song of Ice and Fire I'm so confused today I don't know what's going on 
I recommend this to everyone. Honestly, go read it. It's super fun. The first book is like Hunger Games in space, but just more brutal. And then the second and third book are with intrigue and they're just so, they're so good. They're so good. This is honestly a series that I can say is so good. But honestly, honestly again, P.S. Brown, I don't know if it was P.S. Brown or his publishers or if he had a contract, but they decided to continue the series and add um, another trilogy after the events of the last book. And that sucks ass. Honestly, I'm, why am I saying honestly so much? Don't read it. it. It's not good. It really, it's not fucking good. I read that it was also in the same video as the Truth Witch and Never Night book. Um, I said in that book, I was, in that video, I was so disappointed in the book. It's called Iron Gold and I was so excited to read it for such a long time because I loved the characters and I wanted to see them again. And then I read it and it, it was so bad. It was so fucking bad. And I should have made an individual review about it. I don't think it's that popular. Not many people. I mean, not it's not as popular as other series is. You should read it though. The first trilogy is good. Also, I feel like I'm so short. I'm sitting on my chair. Little knickknacks um, that I have on this shelf are just I don't know if you can see it. Can you? Like maybe if I hold it in front of my shirt. Oh, a little better, right? It's a little Capricorn stone because I'm a Capricorn. Would you have guessed I'm a Capricorn? I don't know. I have an Aries moon, I think that's a little bit more prominent. I also have this little bookmark, which is Yurio or Yuri Blazetsky from Yuri on Ice. I got this for my 15th birthday from the same friend who drew this. It has, it has a little quote on the back, but this is also five years old and so it's really faded. Um, but it was really sweet. It was a really sweet gift. A really thoughtful one because she doesn't watch anime and so she... I don't know how she picked it up, I don't remember that I was obsessed with Yuri on Ice. Um, when it came out, I watched it. I, I was waiting for the episodes every Thursday and they scammed us because they said they were going to make a movie and where is it? Where is it? I have the, uh, what's it called? An Emmer and the Ashes series. And funny enough, I have three different formats of these books. So I have the first one in a hardcover German. It's called Elias and Laia. Don't fucking ask. I don't know what's going on with Germany. Why do they change the covers to make them ugly? German covers are always uglier than the original. Honestly, you have to look it up. They're always ugly. We have Torch Against the Night, which is this really pretty um, cover. It's reflective. I love the spine. And then, for some reason, I, I don't know why publishers do this, they decided to change the covers halfway through the publication process. The last book wasn't out. I don't know if um, A Repair at the Gates was already out, but they changed the covers to this. And so now, none of the covers that I'm ever going to have are cohesive. Besides if I get the last book, because then it's going to have the people on it. But I like the other one's better i don't know only the first book is good i have no recollection of the second book and i only know like three things that happen in the third book honestly i'm like dead ass the only reason that i continued reading the series was for elias who is the main male character elias victorious is the, one of the best characters ever written and i love that man to death like i would die for him i would die to be with him i would break out with my boyfriend and be like i'm sorry i'm with elias now also elias is such a pretty name he is also the only reason i am going to read whatever the fuck the fourth book is called it came out i think this month december 1st maybe i'm pretty sure it did whenever i read that i will make a review about it and i will trash talk it because honestly i don't remember anything that happened so maybe i can't trash talk it because i can't i can't say that things make sense and don't make sense but I'm, I'm probably not gonna like it um, if anything happens to Elias, so <laughs> watch out Saba, I'm coming for you. Have I praised Cass Brecker enough on my channel? No, because I never praise anyone on here. Six of Crows duology is my favorite duology of all time, and Six of Crows is my favorite book of all time. Yay! I like something. I don't always hate on everything, okay? And Crooked Kingdom had come out that day, and it was at the store, which was really weird because I live in Germany, and so they never have books at the bookstore the day they get published in English. But they did, and I was like, oh my god, and I hadn't read uh, Shadow and Bone or the Christian Trilogy at that point, and so I was kind of, I was debating reading the Six of Crows duology, I'm sorry, my arm hurts, so I'm kind of like doing this. So I was debating, I was like, should I get it or should I not get it? And then I asked the person working there, I was like, hey, do you also have Six of Crows? And they were like, no, we don't. And I was like, um, that kind of sucks, because I kind of want to get the second book and you don't have the first book. So I ordered it online, Six of Crows. I had to wait for it to come in. I remember Crooked Kingdom laying on my um, bedside table the whole time. 
It came in, I read it, I loved it. I was so amazed. I was like, this is the best fucking shit I've ever read. It had everything I love, okay? And especially it has Kaz Brecker and that's the thing I love the most in this world. Even above Elias. I'm sorry, Elias. You kind of suck compared to Kat. Kaz Brecker is like my comfort character. And I don't always have to hate on everything. He doesn't deserve the hate. I've never met anyone who doesn't like Six of Crows. But I'm sure there are people. And that's completely fine. But for me, um, this is the best duology ever. Honestly. I love it. I love everything about it. I've reread it multiple times. I can't stop. I'm gonna cry when Freddy... I don't know his last name. Freddy, whatever walks like on scene in april in the show fully dressed with kane i'm gonna cry i can't like see the scene in my head when he walks on and i'm going to cry i'm going to cry up next i have the um red queen quartet i think it's four books i don't have the first one here because i sold it and i also tried selling the other ones but no one wanted to <laughs> so i still have them we have um, Glass Sword. Oh, by the way, these covers are really pretty, okay? They did a good job with that. They did a good job. I'm just gonna pull Glass Sword out, which is the second one, um, because I have that in hot cover and it's so pretty. Don't read this quartet, though. It doesn't- it's not good. Um, not good enough. It, only the first one is good. The first one really, was really good. Maybe my judgment is a little tainted because I did read it. I'm not gonna say when, but you can guess. But when I read the first book, I was obsessed with it and I had it in German, so it's good I don't have it anymore because it didn't fit. It didn't fit. The cover is ugly. I was obsessed with Red Queen. I remember I was like, I would take pictures with the books and I would look it up on Tumblr the whole time. I loved this. I loved the first book. And then the second book came out and I was like, I'm like mm, I don't really like this. And then the third book came out and I don't even remember what happens in that book. I don't even remember what happens in the second book. I have, I have zero recollection of what happens in the second or third one, even less than with um, the Ember and the Ashes quartet uh yeah it's not it's not it there is an annoying ass main character i mean i do have to set the last book here because i did get it uh second hand but i never read it maybe if i want to put myself through the pain but it's like 600 pages so do i really want to read it someone has to pay me to do that mare is such a whiny main character i never liked her attitude i never liked her as a person i didn't like any of the other characters honestly i liked maven i liked Shade? Was his name Shade? I thought his name was cool. That's true. I, I liked him. But I don't I, I don't know what happened to him. Maybe he's dead. Maybe he's alive. I can't really spoil you because I have no idea what happens to him. It's just like, it's just like so disappointing because I think the series turned into something that was very like about, about the politics of the world. And it was really, really complex. And so the characters weren't enough for me to keep me in. To keep me um to keep me engaged i didn't like them enough to keep reading for them and it was all about the plot and about the intrigue and i think victoria avjord um put a lot of effort into that into making the world complex and the world building complex and like translating modern issues into her book but if the characters suck ass how do you expect me to sit through that you know how do you expect me to sit through these war scenes when i don't even care about who who dies and who survives like Sorry, I'm not down for that. It's the Cruel Prince trilogy. It, no. <laughs> Folk of the Air. I fucking hate that title. None of them are the same height. I, I hate myself for buying them in not the same height. But how the fuck am I supposed to know? Just make them in the same height and this won't happen. This won't be an issue, but you didn't. So it's your fault. Whoever published this, hot keys, fuck you. I have a review or I have reviews for all of the books up. You can go watch them. But I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I hated them. I honestly... And like hate read the last book just because I wanted it to be over because I felt so unsatisfied hating on the first and the second book and not reading the third book. Does that make sense? I needed to know how it was going to end. And I, I know why these sucked and I'm going to tell you with my pretty jacket in frame. The world building, it was really really bad and the character development was really really bad and Jude was not a good main character and the romance between her and Cardin was not enough. It was not enough. The books were simply too short. Holly Black should have just chilled out, made the series, maybe make it a quartet for all I fucking care, but make the books longer and make them more build out because I really feel like the series was written on a whim. She like wrote the first book, she saw how well it did and then she was like, fuck, what am I gonna do with the second and the third one? She like didn't have a plan. She was just going to write it. She just wrote something and then people were like, oh yeah, this fucking slaps. Cardin has a tail. We love that. I don't know why you love that. That's fucking weird. He looks like a rat. And every 
plan that Jude ever had failed. And I know a lot of people love this. This was like one of the most popular series in 2020, I bet. But it's just, it's just not, it's not good. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not it. It's too short. It should have been more fleshed out. The characters were too basic and too shat. Like, there wasn't any depth in them. And the backstories felt so forced. And the fucking tail. What is, honestly, why does he have a tail? To make him more interesting. His fucking backstory. I'm not gonna say it, okay? I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna spoil it. But what the fuck is that backstory? She really just... She was like, make it dramatic. And then she just pulled something out of her ass. I'm sorry. And listen, if you like this series, that's completely fine. But I remember when I was 14 and I read most of the books that I did read, I would always feel so insecure about not liking a book or not liking a series that I read when it was really beloved um, in the book community. And I felt very like forced to like it and to continue reading it. And I just want everyone that like feels the same way about this series that just didn't like it, that didn't buy it with it. I just want everyone to know that I'm here and you don't have to like everything. And I'm just vocal about it because I think it's funny. And I like, don't take me too seriously. I'm just, I'm just trying to be entertaining. Crescent City by Sarah J. Maas, our queen of um, writing weird books. Crescent City was the book that I made my first video on, my first two videos, and it was on a whim. I read that and I just had so many emotions after reading it and I was like, I have to share them. And so I set up my camera and I am like hunching my back and like, I don't know why I did a full body shot in those first two videos, I honestly don't know. Um, I was just like, it was like the middle of the night. I was like, I have to, I have to tell someone how horrible this series is. The series isn't even out. Maybe the series is good, but the book just sucks. The pl whole plot of this book doesn't make sense. It feels very unsatisfying when it is revealed in the end. Um, and I mean, it's the first book, so I can't even get it back in, bitch. If you've read the book and you want to know why the plot didn't make any sense in my eyes or why I didn't like the characters, you can go watch my first two videos, but please don't judge it how I'm sitting there. I really don't understand what I did there, but you know what? That first video kind of popped off. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a sensation. I'm a star. Um, I didn't like it. I understand why people like it, but I don't like it um, because of the plot and because um, Bryce is really fucking annoying. She's really annoying. And honestly, Daniqua was the best character. And you know, I'm not gonna say anything else. Go watch my videos, please. We have Lady Midnight, which I did do a review on. And we have Lord of Shadows, um, which I haven't read. I keep forgetting I have that book. I really like the cover of Lord of Shadows. And, um, no, never mind, I don't. <laughs> I like Lady Midnight, though. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what to say about it. I have been trying to get into Cassandra Clare. Honestly, I love watching videos on her controversies because she is just, like, such a shady person. I think, um, the dark, this, this is the Dark Artifices, right? Yes. This is a series that gets a lot of praise from readers. And that's supposed to be, like, like one of her best series and with her best characters and everything. But... I'm just not I feel like I should have just read these books when I was younger because then I would be really invested now I know I would be really invested now um, But I just missed my opportunity to read them when I was younger and now I'm stuck with um, Reading them now and not really being interested, but I kind of want to do it because everyone's read them. I'm pure pressured. I liked um, What's the guy's name? Julian did I like Julian? I didn't like Julian I don't even know. I don't even know what happened in that book. It was kind of like legit nothing to say about Lady Midnight because I can't think of anything that happened in that book right now. I well, I can, but I can't remember any of the characters. Um, also, Emma was annoying. I mean, this is like the corner of shame over here. We have the first two. Oh, these are not in the right order. Whatever, I don't care. City of Bones and City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. And the reason I have this is because I found them at the thrift store, and I've never read um, Immortal Instruments. And will I ever read it? I don't know. That's why I have the first two books here. Because I got them at the fifth store and I paid one euro for them together. You know, so why would I fucking leave them there? I just feel like there has been so many reviews on this series. And there have been so many people probably bashing it. I don't know. Because I didn't watch it. But there have probably been so many people who bashed it. So I don't know if I, they need another person. If they need me to bash it. You know what I mean? I don't know if I have other series to review. Or should review other series. I don't know what I'm saying. And in the very corner, like this is really the, the shameful corner, is Restore Me by Tahara Mafia. I'm not going to even do it the grace of taking it out. I'm just going to put these books in front of them because this is even better than that. I don't even have the Shatter Me trilogy anymore. As I said, I've sold a lot of books or <clears throat> gave them away. And Shatter Me was 
um life-changing for me i read the shadow me trilogy when i was a certain age that i have said multiple times before i need to shut the fuck up it's the first series that i read and it was probably one of those that got me into reading at that age um because i loved wona i love wona he was my first book crush and looking back at it i'm like he's he's a little problematic but he will always have a special place in my heart because he was my first book crush and i will always excuse a little bit more of what he did because he was my first book crush and when you were 14 you didn't really look at how he was toxic and how he was like not the best person because you don't know any better and now i know better so i recently picked up restore me you can go watch that video on my channel and it was the worst like honestly if i have to say the worst book of 2020 that i read it was fucking restore me that book that book was the worst book i've ever read ever ever not even 2020 oh my god i hated it my hate is like i have to watch my own video later to remind me how bad it was i have no idea um why tahara mafi decided to continue the series i can guess though i was so excited to read it because i was like oh my god um my 14 year old self if those things would have been announced you know by that time that i read the series all of the books were already out um i would have been so excited and so i was like a little excited and i read it and i was like what the fuck did i just fucking read did i really just spend fucking four euros on this i mean it was only four euros so it was fine it it's it's a mess it's a com it's a complete mess it doesn't make any sense the characters are all annoying no one behaves like they should behave you have to i hate when when authors do this they go through three books or whatever of character development and then they decide to do an additional series like red rising is doing one and now Tahara Mafi with Shadami is doing one and the characters just like go completely back in their development what the fuck are you doing don't do that let me write it I'll write better fanfiction about it now what is this shelf you'll see in a second now first of all we have my watch over here or my, not my watch my clock over here and I'm completely trained on this clock whenever I want to know what time it is my like my uh, look automatically goes onto this clock um if it weren't there i wouldn't know what time it is because i don't check my phone or anything i always check this anyway let's put that away here we have my little treasure chest and it actually has treasure in it i'll show you <gasps> one dollar I, I have a bunch of foreign money in there let me sit down and look at it yeah why the fuck oh yeah i went to croatia <laughs> oh my god i was like why the fuck do i have croatian bills in here i did go to croatia last year that's probably why look at it can you see the diversity because i can't everyone's white this is the raven cycle by maggie steve Potter. i have debated selling that series multiple times um but i haven't because for some reason like something is keeping me attached to it and i have no idea what it is the fucking i i don't even fucking remember like much of it and i don't think i would enjoy it now i also think that the series isn't as popular as it should be um because it's it's kind of it kind of slaps like it's it's different from the other series that are around and i did really enjoy it while i read it which was a few years ago but i did really enjoy it when i read it my favorite character was the main dude whose name i can't remember right now but y you know you know who i mean like the one the rich one <laughs> i was very unsatisfied by the ending i do remember the ending which is crazy i think i should just get rid of it honestly i need to make space because as you can see this is the sarah j moss appreciation shelf uh the appreciation she doesn't deserve we have echo tar over here all of the books with the fucking dumbass spin-off and these are all of the throne of glass books up till here and what what do you even want to hear from me about that you know what i mean what am i supposed to fucking say about that series i read throne of glass when i was 14 and i started reading it um when queen of shadows came out the year queen of shadows came out so maybe when i was 50 i don't remember what year did queen of shadows come out 2016 i don't know and for me um i was anticipating queen of shadows because that's the book that came out when i was reading it the year i was reading it and so queen of shadows for me is the best throne of glass book and i think that's it for a lot of people i loved the series when i read it at the time up to queen of shadows and then empire of storms i have no idea what happens in that and kingdom of ash i, I don't know what happens in that either i don't have a favorite character either um i do 
Manon. Manon is my favorite character. <laughs> Why am I lying? Manon is one of the best female characters ever. And I remember when I read about, I don't know which one she first appeared in. I think uh, Air of Fire she first appeared. And she was like the sickest bitch I've ever read about. Like I loved her. And I think her character development was really nice. I don't like the relationship she took on later on. I don't, I don't ship it. I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but I don't ship it. So I think, you know, it, when Queen of Shadows came out, I, I loved the book and the series and I thought it had no flaws and I thought it was the greatest thing ever because it really did have everything that I wanted from a book at the time. And also you don't really see the flaws when you're in that first reading phase. You, you know what I mean, like that first reading phase where you're just reading everything. You don't really see the flaws in the books, you just read and you love everything most of the time. Maybe I should reread it, but honestly I don't think I could stand um, Aelin now. I don't think I could. You know, what? you know who's my favorite character? I just remember that. Sam. Of course, Sam is my favorite character. I cried. I cried um, every time his name was mentioned and I hated that um, there was like no uh, uh, tie back is that what it's called no like no drawback to him in the last book I felt like that would have been nice but I don't think that was one and that kind of annoyed me now for Akrata I made a video on Nesta which <laughs> you know what that kind of popped off too I am a star Nesta is a very difficult character for me because you either love her or you hate her I feel like no one is indifferent about her and her book is coming out next year too but I don't know when and I will read it because I have Honestly, you know what? I'm gonna tell you something what annoyed me. I was on book Twitter for a while and um, I had made my Nesta video and it's get, it's it gets really mixed reviews and that's fine because I like w want people to talk about it and people can love her or hate her because I don't I don't really care. I just wanted to share that I just I didn't like her and if people like her that's fine but um, because it's literally it's just a book. It's literally just a character. It's not that deep. I, I English. I'm so mad that I'm speaking German now. So I said in that video, at the very end of that video, that I will read the Nesta Cassian book because first of all, Cassian is my favorite character and second of all, I am open to see um, how Nesta is gonna develop and how um, Sarah J Maas is gonna deal with her trauma because I said I didn't like the idea of Nesta getting her own book with Cassian because I don't think um, that it's a good idea to have her heal her trauma with Dick and with a, with a guy that comes in and is like oh you can do this babe and blah 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 like I, I said in that video I wanted her to fight her fight alone um, and figure out herself on her own that she didn't need a man and I tweeted that also and how many times did I see someone tweet the exact same thing or say the exact same thing and their tweet getting like thousands of retweets and mine not that was like that that was my worst experience on book twitter how I said that in the video and other people I had the same idea but after me i uploaded the video first i'm the original thinker no i'm kidding someone probably had the idea before me but it made me so sad because like i tweeted it and it didn't pop off that's kind of rude i mean you were already able to see this in the background this is like a weird shell so i was thinking what i could put in here because i don't have enough books to put in here and i have one manga which is a <laughs> naruto massive this is a fight against pain and I also got this from the same friend who drew the picture and did the bookmark. So, thank you. Um, we don't talk, but thank you. Uh, this is the only manga I have. She got this for me for my 18th birthday. Um, because at the time, I was watching Naruto for the first time. And I finished it sometime around my 18th birthday. Um, and I was absolutely obsessed with it. And I still am obsessed with it. It's uh, my favorite anime. Is it? I guess. I, I said it now, so I can't take it back. It's my favorite anime. And then you are, you're asking me, what else is this? Well, over here we have an Oikawa glass painting. Um, by the way, I don't know how you say his name in English. Is it Oikawa or Oikawa? I don't know. Because I didn't... I, re I watched it in German. Okay, I'm sorry. I It was on Netflix, so I watched the anime in German. I'm sorry. The first and only glass painting you're ever going to do, and you're only allowed to look at it from far away, because it looks ass from close up. I'm sorry, I am not good at glass painting, but you know, you live and you learn. And I have a little bit of Hunter x Hunter and also um, there's Kageyama down here because I had a bunch of pictures left over from my anime wall. Anyway, that's not what the video is about. We have tiny hands, which I got from uh, a friend for my birthday and I love them because you can always, you know, use tiny hands. And then I have my Yu-Gi-Oh deck and leftover Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And then behind the picture, we have two more decks. But we're also not going to talk about that because that's not about the what the video is about. But I have them in there because my boyfriend and his friends and I 
like to play Yu-Gi-Oh sometimes. We got them into it. And also I watched Yu-Gi-Oh when I was younger. And I remember my mom was pregnant with my little brother. And I asked her to name him Bakura. Because Bakura was my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh character. She did not name him Bakura and I'm so mad about it. Lastly, we have this gorgeous shelf. Um, it's at the very bottom. And it's the OG books. I'm gonna call it. We have an air freshener because sometimes it's smelly in here. I, I think everyone can relate. And we have my wand, which is Harry's wand, but it broke in the middle, so we had to tape it, and so it gives off Ron vibes. This is the whole Harry Potter series. These are all originally from my mom. My mom um, read them, and she, like as they were published, um, and she was like waiting for them to be published, and she went to the cinema. She had like a Harry Potter friend that they only met up to go to the cinema to watch the Harry Potter movies, which is kind of cute, but also kind of weird. I never read Harry Potter. I read the first one when I was younger, um, but I never read the rest. But I do have them if I want to read them, and I think Harry Potter is just... It's so easy to get nowadays because you always find him at the thrift store and stuff and so I just have the full collection here if I ever feel like I want to I want the Harry Potter experience. We also have my the, me, I'm going to give this to my children, my original copies of The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games in German if you want to see the covers. Um do I have to comment on how ugly they are? It's always the same girl. It's just like a different pose and different leaves. Um I don't I don't fucking know. I don't know. I read The Hunger Games when um the movie was about to come out. That was in 2012, maybe? And um the reason I read the books was because my parents didn't allow me to go watch the movie. Because uh, it was PG... I'm gonna say PG-12, because that's how uh, it works in Germany. 12, 16, and 18 are the age restrictions, and I wasn't 12 yet. So I would have had to go with a parent. And I told them, because I saw like a little... um I saw a little... How do you say like in a magazine like a little thing about the hunger games that was coming out and it sounded super interesting and i told my parents and they were like that sounds brutal as fuck you're not gonna go watch the movie but here's the books <laughs> i was like okay <laughs> thanks i guess and so i read them and i was obsessed with the hunger games i was in facebook groups i was writing fan fiction i was really really obsessed i had posters everywhere i was like the hunger games uh expert and everyone knew that and um yeah and um, that was like my monumental series, The Hunger Games. And I'm really happy that I went through that phase, but I was also really weird back then. Because I was obsessed with The Hunger Games and One Direction at the same time, so that was just a weird mix. I have my dad's edition of The Lord of the Rings. Um, do you think I fucking read that? No, I fuck, I didn't. It looks like this, and it's, a, it's all three books combined into one. It has red pages, which is really pretty. And um, it has a bunch of extra material, like um, the languages. It's like explained and different uh, ethnicities in a book explained or nationalities or whatever the fuck you call it. It has maps in it um, that you can take out and like put on your wall and shit. And it's a really, really cool edition. And when I was younger, I would like to like just take it out and look at it. But honestly, if you ever catch me reading The Lord of the Rings, you know that everything has gone downhill because by God, I will never read that series. I have zero interest and I was already like... My mind was already blown over fucking Red Rising. So how the fuck do you expect me to sit through Lord of the Rings and remember anyone? I've watched the movies, I like the movies, but the book? It's, it's multiple, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting it's multiple because I just have one edition. I don't even know if it's originally split up in three. Um, but I guess it is, right? I have no idea. because I. And then the last book, to finish this off. Um, we have The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if I ever read that. It was really popular when I was reading at 14. I don't know if many people know it now, um, but it was really, really popular. And a lot of people talked about it, and so I don't know if I'll ever read it, and my pop stuff, it just popped off. <laughs> that is my whole bookshelf. Um, as I said, uh, it's only popular books. Um, most books that I read now, or not most books, but some books, for example, Iron Gold, or what else did I read? I read something else in that one video. Um, those were two books that I like immediately sold after I read them because I just didn't care about them. I didn't want them in my bookshelf. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of thinking about switching on to online books or ebooks because I honestly, um, there's no point in me getting the books anymore because I don't care about having them in my bookshelf. I'm not, I, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over all of this because I don't even have enough space to put all of these in. I just... I need more space for my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So that was it with my bookshelf tour. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I think it was kind of messy, but um, that represents me the best, I think. I'm just all over the place all the time. 
my attention span is this. Um, I don't really have much to say, much else to say. I just think that um, having books in the physical form and having them on your bookshelf is a nice thing to look at and to take them out, but at the end of the day, I just like uh, having the books that I really care about slash um, the books that I want to read. And some books I just don't want to get rid of because they look pretty. <laughs> I hope to see everyone um, good and healthy in the next year and also maybe in my next video whenever I upload. Um, but until then, I hope everyone stays safe and I'll see you. Bye!